mix. Okay. Good mix. Not primarily one or the other. Mm -hmm. Lots of women in, in accounting. Right. And uh, one or two in budget. Management systems was a brand new area, which is what we today is computers. Mm -hmm. But then I was taking a course and I, I learned how to figure out on the computer how many days you're old. That was my big deal. I'm not a computer person. <laughs> Even today I argue with my cell phone, but that was 1985, 86. Okay. 86, 87. Right around that time frame. And um, there were vac vacancies across air traffic in the air traffic division manager. And so I put my name in the hat. And there were five empties. I didn't want any of them except LA. But I interviewed for all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't want New York. <laughs> I didn't want Southern. They didn't want me. Kansas City was the most critical, I thought. Mm -hmm. And let's see, there was Southern, Southwest, Central, New York, and Western. And in 1987, I was selected to be the division manager in Western, which was my first, well, it wasn't an, yeah, it was an SES position, but it was the first one that a woman became an operational SES. Wow, another first. Yep. And that was great, and I enjoyed. And Western is in LA, right? Right, right. Okay. But you have Arizona, California, Nevada and the big Pacific. Region. Yeah, mm -hmm. very big. Very big. Um, 3,400 air traffic controllers. Wow. So I did that, and now it's 1990. And I got a call from Chicago from, I'm not going to say names because I can't think of it. Anyway, uh, would I be interested in being the Deputy Regional Administrator? Wow. Leave air traffic? Oh, come on. I did that once. I didn't like it. <laughs> and, um, Ed, oh, I liked him. He's a nice man. AF. And so I came back and we visited and at the same time I, my mother was quite ill. And, um, that same summer in 1990, my mother passed away around the 1st of August, and I reported to Chicago the 13th of August. Oh, my goodness. Uh, my daughter's in college. The boys are all here and there. I had one grandchild. Oh, my goodness. Now I have 11. Oh, congratulations. How fun. Yes, it is fun. I love them. And so I became the deputy in Chicago in August of 1990. And I loved working with Ed AF. He was so mindset different from me. Mm -hmm. And I remember he said, you've got to learn program management. And I thought, wow. It's like my dad telling me I had to take physics. Right. Why? Anyway, mm -hmm. but we worked well together. Mm -hmm. And um, one morning we were doing something, and there were two secretaries out, and we were all out in the same room area. And, and I went over to, maybe it was his birthday, I don't know, but I hugged him. You touched Ed. I said, I'm a hugger. Anyway, that was just the difference between the two of us, but mm -hmm. there was room for us. Mm -hmm. Room for him and me. Right, and I him. made good we're counterparts. Yeah, yeah, we're still friends. We have emails today. All right. Um, so, I'm there, and during one lunch period, both the secretaries were out, and I'm in the outer office, and I'll answer the phone for anybody. Mm -hmm. Pick up the phone, and regional administrator... Hello, I'd like to speak to Jacqueline. I think my name was, my maiden name, Jack, 
Jacqueline Smith. Mm -hmm. I said, that's me. And he said, this is, he was the acting administrator, the deputy administrator, but he was acting, right. I can't think of his name. And he said, uh, we're looking at filling some positions, and this is very, keep to yourself, but would you be interested in going to Alaska as a regional administrator? Wow. I thought, oh my God, I've never been to Alaska. I said, absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that was, that was great. Uh -huh. And um, I'm supposed to keep it quiet and not say anything. And I thought, I can't, I can't treat Ed that way. Right. So I went in and I said, Ed, I have to tell you what call I got. And he said, it'll be great and you'll do great. He was so supportive. That's Along great. the way, with all those who were sexist and uh, not really wanting to see a woman successful, mm -hmm. including one husband, <laughs> there were men that got in my corner mm -hmm. and supported me and said, Jackie, you'll do great. Just hold up your end of the bargain. Meanwhile, PwC is thriving and doing well and getting stronger, and yes. um, I just heard this morning we have 491 members. Oh my goodness, that's marvelous. It is. We started with 60. Yeah. And you, men, have always been allowed to join? Oh, absolutely. Fantastic. We had to make that, when the FAA accepted us, it was 1980, and um, recognized um, mm -hmm. employee organization, we had to make sure there was no uh, delineation of mm -hmm. anyone, just like civil rights, right. you can belong to. Mm -hmm. We have several men that belong, have belonged a long time. One fella from Alaska, and Steve, he's been with us maybe 25, 30 years. Oh, goodness. Wow. So I loved working in Alaska. Um, so when did you go to Alaska? 90? 1992. And you too. So the nomadic life continued. Yes. <laughs> you moved more than most military folk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so but I found a nice place to live, and my daughter was in college in Seattle at, oh, okay. at Washington University. And my son, that had been in the Air Force for like eight years, was now stationed at McCord, which is in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And my oldest son is back in New Hampshire. I think. Around them, there were three children. Anyway, the, the grandchildren were growing. Oh. I think I had about five by then. Oh my. And today I have 11, so that's not good. good. And so, what were some of the challenges in Alaska when you arrived there? Learning to understand the bush. Mm -hmm. Because we had, you know, Anchorage International and Juneau and Fairbanks. Right. Certainly nothing like O'Hare or LA, but they were important um, points of transportation in and out of, of barren land. Mm -hmm. um, there were only 1,500 miles of highway in Alaska, which is two and a half times the size of Texas. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's quite quite demanding, mm -hmm. and the need for the little airplane, the little airplanes that could fly out into the bush and take grandma's prescription, the morning paper or maybe the Sunday paper, mm -hmm. and bring things that were not available where they were stationed. And I found that we had FAA employees living in houses that snow was coming in through cracks in the house. It's so old World War II housing, right? and we had a big effort going to improve the housing for all the employees in the bush, mm -hmm. and uh, that was moving along pretty good, although, you know, there's always a list of needs in headquarters, and um, I thought, I felt I supported the Anchorage FAA employees and families, mm -hmm. first time you're involved with families, when we, you fly out to whether you're going to um, uh, Bethel or you're going to, you, you have 
like at church, you mm -hmm. have what did you what do you call it when you bring a dish? Potluck. Potluck. Lots of potlucks. Mm -hmm. I learned to eat moose and caribou and bear. Bears.